All right, so last time we talked about the PKN model. Remember, that stands for essentially three guys' names, Perkins, Kern, Norgren. And the PKN model assumes an elliptical shape for the crack in a vertical direction and then some length. Right? So it has a height, fixed height, HF. And so there's a plane strain assumption here in the vertical direction. So this is vertical. And so we talked about some of the other assumptions behind it, but what you primarily need to know about, you know, or, or understand about this model is it's most applicable when fractures are much longer than they are tall. And that's due to the plane strain assumption in the vertical direction. So the, in order for this model to be accurate or applicable, you need to have long fractures, much longer than they are tall. And of course, it assumes a fixed height. So the next type of analytic model we're going to talk about is the KGD model. I'll write down the guy's names. It's again named for uh, three guys, Kristjanovic, Gertzman, the clerk. Um, I'll write those names down in a minute. But I just want to, on the same picture here, show the difference. So the KGD model assumes that the crack has infinite extent and height. That's not true. I don't mean to say that it's, it, it has a fracture height, but it, the width is independent of the height. Right? So in other words, the walls along the height are straight. So it, it doesn't assume this elliptical shape that the PKN model has. Okay. So in this case, uh, the, the plane strain assumption is in the opposite direction, and it's most applicable. for fractures that are much taller than they are long. So given that these are the two most popular fracture models, and they apply in clearly different regimes, long fractures, long short fractures, tall, uh, I'm sorry. This how would you describe here? So long in length, short in height, right? Fractures. Tall in height, short in length fractures. Okay, I can almost guarantee you that will be a conceptual question on the final exam when when these two models are applicable. So the KGD model. Named after again, Krzyzanovich, um, Gertzma, the clerk, and it was really not one paper 
what, you know, s similar to the PKN model, Perkins and Kern wrote a paper and Norgren extended it. Okay, in this case, Krzyzanovich wrote a paper and then Gertzman and Declerc extended it. And so they start um, now for, they're looking at fluid flow in a rectangular cross section. So if you remember, the starting place for the PKM model was fluid flow in an elliptical cross section. So here, the starting place is, since there's the, the cross section is independent, the width is independent of height, the cross section is rectangular. Okay. And that's much a little bit simpler expression in terms of the fluid flow. Where we're using this consistent symbols as before. So Q is the volume or flow rate in, mu is the fluid viscosity, um, H is the height of the fracture, W is the width of the fracture. And then you can integrate that for the pressure. So I'll just write it over here because we're just going to integrate. And the reason that the coefficient in front, I mean, the, the length of this, it's a bi-wing plane of fracture, so the length of it would be 2L, okay? But then we, so then we just integrate. Instead of integrating from Z minus L to L, we're just going to integrate from Z, from, we're just going to do the integral 2 times the integral 0 to L, right? And then when you do that, then, then the, you get the cancellation and the coefficient in the front. So then if you remember the PKN model, the, there was no fracture mechanics included, right? And this became from the fact that they, they, they examined the net pressure to extend the crack due to energetics, due to fracture mechanics, and compare that to the net pressure associated with flowing the fluid in the small channel and determine that the net pressure to flow the fluid in this small channel, uh, the small cha channel that's opening due to the solid mechanics, that the net pressure would always be higher in the second case, except for unrealistically low in inflows or unrealistically low values of fluid vis viscosity. So based on that, they decided or made the assumption to exclude the fracture mechanics. Okay, in the KGD model. They make, the, an, uh, they make an assumption, and this assumption's actually been verified in the laboratory and at field scale, and is that there's some fluid lag in the fracture. So you have some fracture, and as you go towards the tip, well, I won't draw what the tip looks like at this moment, but as you go th towards the tip, then there's some fluid lag. But the fluid actually doesn't touch the tip of the fracture. And this, again, it's been very this you know it's, it's very hard to flow fluid in s small channels, it, or in other words, the the pressure required to flow fluid is extremely sensitive to the width. Right? Look at that equation. It's a width cube, so it's extremely sensitive to the width. And as the width gets small near the fracture, then you need very very large pressures at the tip. So, you know, it's an assumption of this model, but it's an assumption that's been verified in the lab and at field scale, that the fracture, the, there's no fluid, there's a fluid lag, you see that? And if there's a fluid lag, then there's no internal pressure at the crack tip, okay? And if there's no internal pressure at the crack tip, then you might assume that the crack tip looks like it's called a Berenblatt crack. 
So Baron Blatt's a, a guy who did some work on fracture mechanics and, and basically owing to the, you know, all fractures at the smallest scale propagate uh, by breaking atomistic bonds. And so um, you can make, make the argument that atomistically you'll always have a smooth closure like this, right? Because, you know, here you have intact bonds across some crack tip and then, you know, near, as you move towards this region, then you'll have some bonds that are still, did you, you can, you have, in atomistics you have long range interactions, right? So, I mean, long range are big over angstroms, but nevertheless, they're, they're over some finite distance, they're, they're not sort of continuum nearest neighbor interactions. And so here you, you have interactions that are being stretched and eventually will be broken at this crack and then you have this kind of smooth crack tip. Now, um, Baron Blatt's assumption applies also at the continuum scale, but the, it's motivated by the atomistic, his ideas of atomistics and, and on fracture. So, uh, so the idea here is that these, these guys close smoothly, and if they close smoothly, then the, uh, the, the basically you can, you can show that the stress intensity factor is zero. Okay. And so then if you write down an equation for that, you know, obviously we're skipping some derivations and stuff that you'd see in a fracture mechanics course. So this would be the equation for the stress intensity factor, and that would be equal to zero. Okay. And then finally, the last equation we need is that it, it's also due to Snedden's solution for a rectangular cross section, and that is the width of a pressurized crack, and I'm saying at the wellbore here, the width at the wellbore where it's the maximum. Okay, back here is equal to four E prime, that's the plane strain modulus. So this is back to that guy Snedden. So then solving these three equations, you can write in the way that Perkins and Kern wrote the net pressure Fracture width at the at the well bore. And if there's no leak off, then th these equations can be solved for the length Yes. 
So this is the Malik era. So that's kind of nice. There's some pretty simple equations. And you can just basically plug these into your calculator, right? Uh, pretty simple equations to get the length and the width of the fracture. Um, unfortunately, in a real petroleum engineering application, I can sort of only think of one scenario that they might be applicable. Right? Remember that these are these are for tall fractures that are taller than they are long, right? And so this equation here is the no leak off case. You'd have to have a very tight formation. So maybe a vertical well with lots of vertical perfor perforations in a tight in a small zone. Um, in a shale, right? Which is not something we typically would do. So, again, if you remember when we started the discussion of these analytical models, I mean, in the in the 60s and 70s, when there was nothing else, and we didn't have all the computers we have now, you had to do something. You had to be an engineer, and you could actually do fracture designs based on these. Now, we almost always use something more complex than this, some computer implementation of more sophisticated physics. But nevertheless, these models are useful in validating those computer implementations. So if you include leak off, KGD, including Carter leak off, so we talked about last time, the Carter leak off model, uh, the volume of a two wing KGD fracture this so performing the volume ba balance procedure if you just go back and watch what we did last time and you can get fracture length or CL is the Carter leak off coefficient The RFC is the error function. So Gerson and DeClerc, also in the same paper, they basically published two models, one, one for uh, bi-wing planar fractures and one for radial fractures. Right? So radial fracture is a fracture that's radius grows uniformly from a wellbore. But it's under the same assumptions here that the width is independent of position around the circle, right? So KGD uh, for radial geometry, if you will, 
and we'll just I'm just going to write down the final equations um, for the no leak off case. You have the, the width. As to the one ninth in both cases. Now you don't have a you don't have a length, but rather a radius. So the the radius of the fracture. So the four ninths, so it's one ninth, four ninths. And including leak off. to so the one half, so all that's under a square root sign. And here S is So that's for KGV for radial geometry. So typically when you, the next thing we're going to talk about are planar fracture models. So these are models that we, we literally just look at the propagation in a plane, like in the surface. Right? And so those models are basically going to be plane strain models in the vertical direction. So they're going to be KGV models, right? So they're so a lot of times, you know, you start off with a, you know, come up with a new method. You start in 2D before you go to 3D, and so any 2D implementation uh, that has that plane strain assumption, then the KGE model would be what you would use to try to verify. Um, 
So I'll give you guys a homework. I'll probably come up with it over the weekend where you'll have to plot some, you know, I'll give you some inputs, injection rates, whatever, time, and then you'll have to plot some KGV, PKM curves. It's, it's actually pretty easy because you're just essentially plotting a function. The function's a little complicated, but you guys have, at this point, written a lot of computer code that essentially just implements little functions like that, right? So. Just think of it like a calculator exercise. Um, so now we're going to, those are, the KGD, PKN are, you know, at this point, I mean, there, there are some other analytic models out there, but those are the two sort of ubiquitous ones, and so that's the only ones we'll talk about. Uh, we'll move on to now to talk about how we, different ways we might implement more sophisticated physics into a computer, okay? And if we're doing it in a computer, we don't have to make assumptions, well, depending on the complexity you want to have, but, you know, we don't have to do things like completely ignore the fracture mechanics or, you know, we, if it's 2D, if it's still a 2D code, then we do have to make some assumption about plane strain and other, and so a few other things, right? But we don't have to sort of exclude the fracture mechanics part because we don't, because it's inconvenient for us, right, or untractable. So we can go ahead and, and include it. And one way that is a popular way to account for this stress intensity factor or the displacement discontinuity, uh, the, the, the method is called the dis displacement